a very warm welcome to all the students and parents for the orientation session the first year undergraduate program i sachin rajgopalan assistant professor from department of microbiology take immense pleasure in welcoming all of you on behalf of shikshan prasarak mandali's ramnarayan ruya autonomous college mumbai this institution is regarded as the torch bearer of contemporary education and sticking by the motto of explore experience and excel this institution has always strived hard in the holistic development of the students and so i would like to heartily congratulate each one of you for becoming the part of this big ruya family let me first take out some pleasure to introduce to you all all the people who are there with us today for conducting this orientation session let me begin with introducing to you all our in charge principal dr anushree lokpur also we have our vice principal vice principal academics dr varsha shukla and vice principal finance dr manish khate hello hello everybody Adesan, you are on mute. You will have to unmute. Hello, everyone. I would also like to introduce Dean Academics, Dr. Jata Suvarnapati. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Ruya. And our education coordinator, Dr. Sunil Shankaravar. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so with this. let me now request our in charge principal dr anushri lokur to address the gathering and acquaint the students and parents with the rich history and the current proceedings of the institution over to you ma'am Anushri, ma'am, are you there? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Sorry. So uh, yes. So thank you, Sachin, and a very, very good morning to all the students here and, and the parents who are attending today's orientation. program for our undergraduate student namas college this orientation system yes so internet issue we are facing so anyway if you can't hear me just let me know one of you let me know okay so uh, let us start with today's orientation program before that let me just uh congratulate all the students and the parents for the success that you have had in these examinations last year has been really really difficult for all of us last year year and a half has been really difficult for the students and the parents teachers everyone alike and i must congratulate all of you for Uh, managing to successfully secure high marks in these examinations even going through all these problems and uh, this happens only when the parents and students and teachers all of us work together because the final goal for all of us is well being of the students and i can see that um, all of you have really uh, ex excelled in your examinations so let me again congratulate all of you on behalf of sp mandalis ramnarayan ruya autonomous college all of us here faculty we believe that we are a part of ruya family and now i welcome you students and parents to this ruya family we are an extended family so aapla sagrancha ruya cha family madhe swagat ahe now we are going to start with the orientation program now in this orientation program what i am going to do is i am going to take you through what is ruya i will tell you what is ruya college all about 
Unfortunately, normally this orientation happens in our auditorium and we have batches, smaller batches. We have multiple batches. So you come, you sit in our uh, state of the art auditorium. You see the college that time. The, there are people who will take you around and show you the facilities of the college. That is how it happens normally. Unfortunately, we are uh, we will have to do it virtually right now also. But I will take you through a tour of college wherever it is possible, and we hope that soon enough you will come to be come to college. We will be calling you next week, anyways, for uh, document submission, and that will be announced very soon. So let's start with the orientation, and I'll give you the uh, whole uh, gist of what RIA College is about. You'll have glimpses of what uh, the uh, infrastructure is and uh, what uh, activities ca are conducted over here. So let's start with that. Uh, Antara, next slide, please. Yes, so let's first start with we are an autonomous college and we got we became autonomous in 2017 that uh, autonomous means that means we are we are still affiliated to University of Mumbai, but when you are an autonomous institution, you have freedom to devise your own syllabi and you can take your examinations on your own. So we have academic autonomy. So that is what is an autonomous institution about. We have completed four cycles of NAC accreditation. I think all of you know what NAC is. NAC is an apex body which uh, accredit, uh, gives uh, accreditation to institutions. There are seven parameters on, uh, on which educational institutions are accredited. And I must tell you that we are one of the highest scoring institutions uh, in uh, Maharashtra. We have a CGP of 3.70 in fourth cycle. Many institutions are still in their second or third cycle of accreditation. We are already leaders in this area also. And we have already completed four cycles of accreditation. Next slide, please. Oh, eight minute, just a minute, just a minute, just a minute, go back. Uh, we have purposely put all these uh, uh, pictures over here. This is on the left that you first picture that you can see on the left. This is our main entrance. This is where you would have entered the college uh, today had you come here for orientation. The next is the quadrangle as we call it. And this is a very, very uh, vibrant place when students are there. This is full of students. All our programs happen over here. And this is the place many students after they pass out, they reminisce about this time spent in this quadrangle. So this is one important place, students, for you while, uh, while you are here. And we hope that soon things will open up and you will be a part of this whole um, vibrant culture that we have over here. The third one is the staircase of the main staircase, which leads to the main building of the college. We have two buildings. This is the main building that you are seeing. And there is a building immediately uh, next to it through the garden that is shown in the next and the last picture. So that leads to the second building. So some uh, uh, lecture halls and some labs are in that building, while most of the facilities are in this main building. And as you can see the main building, staircase on the sides you see that there are uh, many you can't see it very clearly but we have pictures of all our jewels of Ruya that is many prominent alumni that are there which I will be talking about in the end but that is how it is uh, and there are other notices and stuff that is there required it's there all along on the staircase the next uh, picture and the last picture is the garden that you pass through from one building to the other. And the picture in between is a typical corridor of the classrooms or laboratories that you will be uh, sitting in or you will be working. In. Next slide, please. So this is we are just trying to give you glimpses of uh, infrastructure. Here also there is one picture, last picture that you can see is the auditorium where we would have had our orientation today. So maybe virtually you may feel that you are sitting there right now and we are interacting over there. Uh, as you can see, our vision and mission, it is displayed everywhere. It is there on our website. I 
urge all of you to go to our website if you have not already explored it. There is a lot of information on our website where you can go and see what is our vision and mission. And as you can see, in our vision is to lead as a globally acclaimed center for advanced knowledge creation, research, and innovation with inclusivity and human values as it at its core and contribute to nation building by transforming students to lifelong learners who can meet the challenges and demands of the global society. And mission, as you can read, I'm not going to read it, but uh, based on this vision and mission, you will see that when once you come over here, we uh, want you to uh, develop your personality completely. It's not that we focus only on academics. We focus on all-round development of the students. We give a lot of emphasis on uh, uh, other uh, uh, facets of your personality development have to be built. And therefore, all the activities, all the um, things that are built over there, every department does something which we are going to see. And that helps you develop your overall personality. All of you have to understand, especially parents who are attending this uh, gathering today, this uh, orientation program today, you have to understand that your uh, children are going to, there is a lot of change in the job scenario. Next 10 to 15 years are going to be, uh, you are going to witness a sea change in the workplace atmosphere. The permanent job thing may not may be a thing of past. Students may be having two or three different kinds of jobs, and therefore they need to develop different kinds of skills. And we are understanding this, and therefore we have also taken cognizance of the National Education Policy 2020, and uh, we have changed being an autonomous institution, we can modify our curricula and examination pattern so that we give you exposure or we uh, develop all these different aspects of your personality. So when you are in college with us, parents also need to understand, encourage the students or students, if you are here by yourselves, understand that taking part in various activities that college has to offer, maybe a departmental activity activity or a college activity that helps in developing many other skills that you need besides your main subject domain. So be a part of all this culture that we have, vibrant culture that we have and the activities that we have to offer. Take part in maximum uh, things, activities that are there with us, which we are going to see soon so that you develop your personality and various skills which will help you in your career, in your lifelong uh, career, and to lead a very satisfactory life um, as an individual. Please go ahead. So a little bit about Ruya College. It's the first college started by a private management in Mumbai in 1937 by Shikshana Prasarak Mandari, Pune. Our parent body is situated in Pune and they have around 62 educational institutions in and around Maharashtra. Student strength is around 3000 uh, plus or minus 100 to 200. Uh, we are known for our strong research cultures. We have uh, up till now produced more than 600 PhDs in all these years. And we focus, as I said earlier, on holistic growth of students. Next slide, please. These are uh, some of our glorious achievements in the recent past. I'm just going for in last 10 years, what are our achievements? Very recently, we have become recipients of DBT Builder Grant. DBT is Department of Biotechnology, Government of India. And a Builder Grant is given for postgraduate education. And only two colleges in Mumbai have uh, are recipients of this grant. So we are very proud of this grant that we have received very recently. We are recipients of prestigious RUSA grant. RUSA is Rashtriya Uchchatar Shiksha Abhiyan, which is now an apex body in higher education. And they have given us a grant for various, uh, for improvement of facilities, for training of 
uh, teachers in newer teaching training methodologies and uh, various programs for students, project-based learning, uh, etc. So all these kind of things are being done under RUSA grant. We are also recipients of another prestigious Star College grant under by DBT, again, Department of Biotechnology, which is given for undergraduate education, especially in uh, for sciences, pure sciences. This is to encourage students to take pure sciences in their career. And we have 12 departments under DBT scheme. We are the only college in Mumbai to have DDU Kaushal Kendra. Kaushal Kendra is an, Kaushal is an acronym for skill development. So uh, we are we have three courses under which are known as Vivo courses under DDU Kaushal Kendra. And this is given again by UGC New Delhi. UGC is University Grants Commission, New Delhi. We are known as College of Excellence, again by UGC. Few colleges who are doing well are given this recognition. So this is by University Grants Commission. And earlier, we have been recipients of DST's Department of Science and Technology, again, Government of India. So FIST is for infrastructure improvement. So that grant, we were recipients in 2010. So these students, this just tells you that what kind of institution you are associated with. This is our standing. These are all the prestigious grants that any educational, aided educational institution can get. And we are recipients of all of these grants. So uh, when you are coming into Ruya, you should know this and you should be very proud of institution. And and you should really have this feeling of belonging and proud feeling when you see these achievements. And we even want all these facilities that come through these grants are extended to you. And what we request is you to take full benefit of all these opportunities that come by when you are a part of this institution. Next slide, please. <clears throat> now, when you are here, you might have taken admission to some, uh, maybe uh, in arts or maybe in science or uh, maybe in uh, self-financing uh, courses. But when you are a part of Ruya family or when you are in Ruya, you have to know what are the other courses offered over here. It is uh, uh, in this world, it is an interdisciplinary uh, world or uh, that is the uh, main uh, importance that when you are there, you have to know uh, what else is there in your institution. You have to interact with students from other faculties. Art students should interact with science students, science with arts, vice versa. And uh, there is a lot of peer learning that happens over here. And that goes a long way in your career span. And and therefore, you have to know what else is there on offer at Ruya. So just have a look. We have aided and unaided. Unaided is these are permanently no grant basis. That is, we don't get any grant from the government. While aided courses, we get grants from government. So in aided, we have all these economics, history, English, French. We have five languages, French, Hindi, Marathi, Sanskrit. We have mathematics, philosophy, political science, statistics, and commerce three units. While in unaided or permanently no grant basis courses are psychology, communication, and mass media, which Marathi as well as English media, which was earlier known earlier known as BMM. Next slide, please. In science, we have in aided, we have botany, chemistry, life science, mathematics, microbiology, uh, physics, statistics, and zoology. So we have uh, many biological sciences, chemistry, physics, everything. So if you see that it's a very good combination, you have combinations and it helps you develop in other subject domains also, your skills in other subject domains also. In unaided, we have five-year integrated bioanalytical sciences and others are three-year UG courses, biochemistry, biotechnology, and computer sciences. Next. 
we have as i told you earlier we are the only institution having ddu kaushal kendra many other colleges do have bvoc programs we have three bvoc programs pharma analytical sciences the lab that you can see below is a pharma analytical science lab then there is greenhouse management the last picture that you see <coughs> are on uh, it's one of the hydroponics facility of uh, on our terrace for uh, greenhouse then uh, the middle two pictures are some events and the classroom of uh, our uh, tourism and travel management course so these are our three courses which are under nsdc national skill development corporation these are recognized by ugc and we have association with sector skill councils uh, uh, that government has uh, has various sector skill councils and along with our exams we also have certification by cert, uh, sector skill councils in all these and you get a government recognized certification when you are in these programs many of us do not know about bvoc programs but it is worth exploring these programs as they are uh, under this um, mission skilling of india that is becoming very uh, popular and these courses are really job oriented and our students who are in these uh, courses have found jobs immediately so those who are interested can still have a look at these courses and we are always there to help you if you need any other understanding or if your friends need to know these are good courses from job perspective next slide please we have though you are all undergraduate students it's good to know what your institution offers in post graduate space so we have a large number of post graduate courses all the science ug courses that you saw all of them have pg that is pg is post graduate courses we have msc by papers as well as msc by research in certain cases and msc by papers is there in all the sub science subjects that you saw in earlier slide so once you come to ruya for your undergrad expect you to be with us for other two years also for msc and we have phd which you will see in the next slide that we also have phd program uh, in the science subject so you can be there with us for another four years four to five years so once a ruyait always a ruyait once you come here many of the students do their undergraduate but also do their pg and they continue some of them continue for their phd programs with us and we have large number of such students and they come back and help us uh, train um, current students also that's again another uh, what you say a, a feature of ruya which is quite unique please go ahead next slide so as i was telling you this is in all science subjects you will have phd for all the courses uh that we have and for arts there is history english and sanskrit these departments have uh, phd programs uh, we also have hindi now added to this and we'll be adding one or two more in the coming years next slide please as i was telling you we take pride in our strong research culture but when you are going to do lot of research you should support it with a uh, high end uh, facilities also physical infrastructure also and i we are showing you here what are the specialized laboratories that we have at ruya the uh, one of the pictures that you are seeing on first on the left is our computer uh, science uh, classroom cum laboratory which is which has a again state of the art infrastructure and uh, there are around 60 uh, 70 terminals over here the next slide is from one of our advanced instrumentation centers ps ramna an instrumentation center that is there where there are many advanced instruments that are required in analytical chemistry next slide is again one such lab undergraduate lab that is there uh, in our college uh, next is again one of the uh, facilities of um, i think this is a bmm classroom that you can see next uh, last one is 
uh, one of the uh, hoods that uh, is required for sterile work. We have a lot of uh, biological sciences and all of the, them need such facilities. So this is one such facility that is shown in the picture. We have really good laboratories and under USA grants, we have renovated some more laboratories and uh, instruments also. We have many latest instruments in most of our labs. So as you can see, we have this Ramnathan center that you saw where there is advanced instrumentation. It's a centralized instrumentation facility. We have animal tissue culture laboratories, plant tissue culture laboratories. We have a certified animal house, which is a very unique facility. No undergraduate college has an animal house. So we are very, very unique in this uh, regard. We have two very uh, proper molecular biology labs and one of the labs is very uh, completely up to date with all instrumentation, etc. And then bioanalytical bio, bio, bio science laboratory, green chemistry laboratory, we have a herbal research lab and a microfluidics lab. Again, no undergraduate college has microfluidics lab. Microfluidics is another area that is coming up in recent times. And we have already, we are pioneers in this area also. Next slide, please. We take pride in our collection at the library. Our library is considered as one of the very uh, recognized uh, good library in Mumbai. We have a big collection of books. The library is situated in the quadrangle. When you see the quadrangle on the right hand side, when you enter the quadrangle, on the right hand side, you see the library. It is known as Meghani Library with the PD Meghani Library. It is because of the help, financial help that they have given us for building this, for renovating this library. We have a reference section, we have journals, we have uh, a, a manuscript. We are known for our rare books and manuscript collection. So many humanities students uh, really uh, use this facilities, books and manuscripts really very well. We have a reading hall on third floor, again, very well uh, established, very well constructed reading hall where students can come and sit and study over there. And there are their uh, regular books are kept there. So if you don't have a book, you can come and sit there and study. And we are members of Inflibnet and Gestor, which are UGC consortium, so that all our references are uh, being made available to uh, PG students as well as teachers. We have special facilities for visually challenged students and senior citizens in our library. Next slide, please. This is something of interest to all of you. This is, we have, as I said, a very active student life. Our Ruya Student Council is very active and we uh, conduct continuously, we conduct programs and we participate in various activities all around Mumbai, in Maharashtra, everywhere. What you are seeing is some glimpses, some pictures of activities that happen in Ruya. So Utsav and Arohan, that's written in the left first slide. Utsav and Arohan, these are our one is intra-collegiate intra festival and Arohan is intercollegiate festival where a lot of different uh, types of activities happen over there, which you will come to know. We will be having an induction program for students soon once you settle down where we give you information about each and every activity that happens in Ruya. So Utsav and Arohan, is, these are our flagship events of Student Council. We have been, we understand that physical fitness is very, very important. And therefore, through Student Council, we have been arranging marathons and activities like for physical fitness, monsoon sports and various sports related activities. So you can see those two kind of activities. The next slide that you are seeing is we have a very active dramatics club where there is one of the prize winners. They are posing over here. Similar next slide also has some dramatics kind of event that is happening. On the leftmost, Mephile Mauj, again, a literary event or a musical kind of event. These kind of events keep happening. This is one of such events that was uh, there earlier. This is uh, one of the classrooms that is being shown where there is some uh, event uh, or some activities going on. 
on the right hand side what you are seeing is another uh, team of our students uh, eight students from undergraduate students who had won a very prestigious prize in a scientific competition at boston in usa and uh, the then uh, chief minister of maharashtra honorable devendra ji fadnavis uh, he had congratulated our team of young students and our young faculty as you are seeing over there and this is one of those pictures that you are seeing so this is what we have to offer you in duya you will be seeing many more slides as we go along and when you we have induction program we will you will know what all types of activities are there and how you can be a part of all these activities or whatever is your liking next slide please so these are some more activities ekadashavtar is one of the plays that won lot of prizes in uh, earlier years these are some dramatic events dance performance and the lower most the one that you can see the bottom picture is a silent disco we were again pioneers in having this concept we don't want we understand noise pollution and importance of maintaining the uh, sound level uh, below certain decibel so we introduce a concept of silent disco and we let you enjoy but understanding your social responsibility so this is one of the pictures of that besides that we have as i told you we have student council we are student council a very active body you can be a part of that there are various um, uh, aspects that whatever you like you can work for that we have a natya valai which i think many of you know and many come here just to be a part of natya valai and this will be told to you in details later on we have a performing arts society we have a very active career guidance and placement cell so through this career guidance and placement cell parents also please take note we continuously help the students to um, uh, expose you for first of all your so soft skill developments resume building personality building and we have tie ups with various agencies or various uh, institutions uh, uh, etc through which who come to us for placements internships etc and that is done through this placement cell we also have a personal counseling at uh, available in our college our own team is there and any student needs any help or if a parent feels that your ward needs some help you please reach out to us all these numbers will be given to you in the induction they are there on our website you can always reach our counselors for any kind of help that you need we have a gender sensitization cell the numbers are given in the prospectus if you have any uh, issues related to this you can contact our in charges our prospectus is there on the website all the numbers which are important for all these will be there on our website we have anti ragging committee and squads though i'm proud to tell you that at roya we never experience these kind of events like ragging etc does not happen in ruya and in fact there are students who are elders who are uh, uh, older students they mentor the younger ones and welcome them at ruya we have a freshers party to welcome our younger ones or new ones unfortunately you won't have it now whenever you join we will have some event whenever it's physically uh, things open up we will definitely have something for you we also have a students grievance cell if any time you feel that there is any grievance uh, you can reach out to this cell again all the contacts are there in prospectus as well as on the website next slide please next slide yeah so this is a code of conduct for students you have to understand compulsory for 75% for uh, for your examinations but we expect to your students to have 100% attendance okay and we take this matter very seriously you have to once you are in college you have to wear your i card there are certain rules regarding examinations etc these are given to you today also you will have a session in induction also you will have a session and you have to understand them very well 
so that you take this very seriously and there is unfair means also if any student uses unfair means in any examination we take it again very seriously and uh, there is a disciplinary action taken by the committee next and i hope that i do you don't come it never comes to that and you follow all this these discipline and examination uh, rules very properly this is something very important all of you there is an app that we have for our college it is called as ruya student diary today itself all of you have to download this app it is available on google play store it is there for android phones and you have to download all the notices that are pertinent to you will be sent on your diary all uh, all of you understand this very very clearly today itself parents also please note that all the notices will be displayed on the website they will be there in the ruya students diary you do not expect whatsapp messages for all these examination dates examination rules and uh, other uh, form filling dates etc etc you have it is your responsibility to see the website see the notices every day make it a habit to see a website if there is any new notice that's your notice board virtual notice board see that so that you are updated about what is happening in college student diary gives you all these your results fees paid any library out uh, whatever uh, uh, details that are there any notification your examination hall ticket time table attendance everything comes on this diary if you do not have this diary you will not even get your result because result is also given through this app okay so download it today itself and Uh, if you do not have this app you may not know some notices so take care that you have this okay it's made for your own convenience next slide please we are uh, very aware of uh, our social responsibilities and we have our extension activities where we have our nss unit and ncc unit we have ncc unit boys and girls unit and uh, nss unit is also very very active the pictures that you are seeing here is our students working in the villages that we have adopted with us adopted um, for uh, nss work we do lot of various kinds of activities in the village that we adopt uh, it may be tree plantation it can be water conservation awareness teaching the students over their uh, hygiene kind of training and these kind of trainings are done over there in the villages that we adopt and i urge students to join in these activities so that your social involvement is there you are in touch with grassroots levels uh, uh, in india so that your personality development is always could you understand what are the problems that occur in these villages so that you can work uh, in uh, certain areas your your understanding is better and uh, ncc also those who have that kind of interest we have very good ncc units many of our students have joined army they have been invited for republic day parades or uh, youth exchange programs and we really have very active units so the pictures that you are seeing are those pictures in the lower two pictures are from ncc units so you can if you like that you uh, should join these uh, activities there will be detailed sessions on this in your induction program next slide please we also have a sports academy we have an uh, as you are seeing on the left hand side this is the marathon that we had arranged we had arranged two marathons uh, since the last two years because of the lockdown one and half year we have not been able to arrange a marathon but soon enough again we'll resume all these activities we have a uh, 
international standard shooting range and many you can be a part of this if you are interested in this kind of sport you can start learning this also there are coaches available over there and you can be part of all these activities there is a badminton hall there is a gymnasium which uh, is available to students um, uh, whenever if you want to join this gymnasium and this uh, the lower one is one of the sports events we have monsoon sports it's a lot of fun event for the students and there is physical fitness also so we encourage these kind of events so these are the pictures just for you to see next we have a global partnership cell and through this global partnership cell we have various mous our college has signed mous with various universities in the usa harrisburg university westchester university and indiana university of Pen pennsylvania are the ones which we have signed recently the picture that you are seeing is one of the recent mous that we signed just before the lockdown with indiana university of pennsylvania you can see their a uh, team as well as our team over here and on the left hand side what you are seeing is one of our programs that happens yearly every year it's known as campus pennsylvania program it's for science students especially biological science students <coughs> there at least 20 to 30 of the students every year they go to uh, iup campus in uh, pennsylvania and uh, there uh, they work for a month, month and a half uh, in certain techniques in biology and it has been a very successful program in last few years. Next slide please. And the, again that also will be explained to you in the uh, induction program. <clears throat> Another area that we are <coughs> really active in and uh, uh, encourage you to participate in activities of ourselves for innovation, incubation, and entrepreneurship. As you all know, that uh, after your uh, education is over, many of us look at getting a good job. But it is also important sometimes that you consider starting your own business and be self-employed or you become an entrepreneur and employ others. You create jobs. And as our uh, Honorable Prime Minister Modiji's mantra, scaling India and um, start your own business, is entrepreneurship is given a very big boost in this uh, plan also. And we have a very active cell, which is called as RCIIE, where we uh, help the students. We train you for, we educate you, you help you do your research. We help you in, uh, we arrange sessions with various people who help you start your business if you have an idea. So again, details will be given to you, but we want you to look at these things very uh, yeah, it's a very important thing for your growth and we would like you to be a part of activities of this cell, RCIIE cell. Next slide, please. <clears throat> we understand that if you want to excel, it's just not subject domain and other soft skills that are important, but we understand importance of emotional well-being. That is very, very important for your overall development for your um, happiness and for your emotional well-being if you are emotionally um, satisfied or well emotionally balanced then many of the uh, you your success is much better in real life and therefore we take this really seriously we have a cell ruya center for mindfulness and well-being through which we conduct various programs. We have yoga uh, uh, sessions, we have emotional uh, quotient kind of things, uh, and there are sessions on interpersonal and many more you will search yeah my internet is a problem i think right next slide i cannot cannot see it uh, anyway just a minute yeah yeah uh, can you hear me now 
Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Sorry for that. Uh, there is, uh, we also understand uh, our, again, so responsibilities and uh, we also encourage students to do research while in their undergraduate uh, uh, studies itself. We have established a RUYA Center for Urban Studies where we currently we have taken this area of our area, if not what, and uh, every department will be doing some activities in next few years. We will be doing this study uh, on every department will be working on some aspects of urban life uh, pertaining to their subject in our area. So that is what we will be doing under urban studies. And this is real kind of case study kind of approach that we will be giving our students in years to come. Next slide, please. Uh, am I audible properly? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm coming towards the end of my talk, and I cannot end my talk without showing what illustrious alumni we have. And today I'm just giving you glimpses of some of them because it, we have really a large repertoire of. We have large number of uh, alumni who are really well placed, doing well in various areas of the Excel in their areas or whatever areas they have chosen in their life. And uh, another most important point is there is a still a very good connection between them and Ruya, and they come and guide the current batch of students. So you are really blessed in this aspect. So I'm just going to show you some of the uh, alumni, illustrious alumni in various sectors. So in education, as you can see, uh, our Current Vice Chancellor of University of Mumbai was uh, Dr. Suhas Pednekar, Professor Suhas Pednekar. He was a former principal over here in Ruya College. Another former Vice Chancellor, Dr. Snehalata Deshmukh, was also, uh, it's also a Ruya alumnus. Next. In science and technology, these are really, really very few pictures. We have, I think next time we'll have a big, uh, maybe a larger number of pictures. Uh, we have Dr. Kasturi Rangan. I think I don't even have to tell you who he is right now. He, uh, you must be hearing him about uh, a national education policy, a key figure who was in charge of this national education policy. And you must have heard about his name in association with ISRO. Then Dr. Ramani Narayan, another faculty who is in US, Dr. Nitin Baliga, again US, one of the younger faculties who is again doing very well in the fields of systems biology in the US. Next slide. In economics, I don't, again, I don't think these faces need introduction. Uh, Dr. Narendra Jadav and Dr. Lord Meghna Desai, both very renowned economists in their own areas. Next slide, please. Kids, you can, students, you can Google and find out who these are if you don't know. In music, again, many stalwarts in this are our alumni, Dr. Ashwini Bide Deshpande, Dr. Shruti Sadolikar, Pandit Vidyadhar Vyas, and Dr. Varda Godholi, and there are many, many others. Next, cricket, and uh, any all many other fields. So uh, uh, out of these, <coughs> unfortunately, we have lost uh, Shri Ajit Vadekar and Nandu Natekar also recently, but these are stalwarts in their fields. I don't, I don't think they need any introduction. Sandeep Patil, all, all of them are our alumni. Next slide. <coughs> I think again, these are known figures. Medha Patkar, uh, social activist, very, very active. You keep hearing her name or seeing her in the newspapers. Sri Madhu Dandavate, your generation may not know him, but our generation remembers him very well. So you can look up uh, what are their contributions. Sri Manohar Joshi, they have been very active in politics and they are again all associated with us. Next. I think again, all of you know these people. 
will definitely in um, uh, all film industry in media we have a lot late shri vinay apte we have nishikant kamant again late nishikant kamant gajendra hires ruha joshi priya bapat sonia patsure all of them you see them uh, on the uh, i think uh, all the time on the media all the time next slide please uh these are our entrepreneurs we have put some uh, senior citizens and some young entrepreneurs to for you to see that we have entrepreneurs in all uh, different areas and different age groups so achala joshi shri dilip dandekar then we have archana krishnan and dr rahul barke all of them in their different areas they have been experts and they are very successful entrepreneurs and we encourage you to take this path some of you who have this kind of inclination take this path instead of going into a job market next slide please that was our my last slide i thank you all very much i welcome all of you again to this uh orientation program and welcome you are uh, welcome you to our um college and i just hope to see you soon in college uh, right now walking along the corridors it feels very empty without all of you so we soon hope that conditions improve we are allowed to open campuses and we see you in college very soon thank you very much thank you so much ma'am for that virtual yet very very interesting walk through of ruya college i'm sure that the students are very very excited to be here in ruya college whenever uh, we get the regulations from the reopen so students now as you have set out for your undergraduate program at ruya college it is very important to understand some of the terminologies of academic program and also get acquainted to the concept of academic credits and for the different certificate courses that the institution has to offer to you all so for this i would request our dean academics dr sujata suvarnapatki to address the gathering over to you ma'am thank you thank you mr rajgopalan hello everyone and once again good morning i'm going to speak specifically about the academic credits probably this term is completely new to you but i'm just going to give you a brief idea as to what are academic credits how many credits are awarded at the end of each program that uh, you have opted for according to your choice and how additional academic credits can be achieved through the certificate courses so um as for the guidelines by the university grants commission and by the university of mumbai every academic program be it ba bsc bvoc they award the students a fixed number of credits at the end of the program okay so these credits may vary from program to program but the credits will be awarded at the end of every semester and examination if you successfully pass your examination which i'm sure you will be able to so uh, i would request antara to go ahead with the next slide wherein i'm going to just explain to you very briefly how every program has different number of credits now uh, this table may look little uh, you know kind of tedious for you to understand right now but the same information is also available in the prospectus which madam just mentioned that it is very much available uh, on to our website so uh, talking about the credits acquirement uh, by the for the ba program as you can see from here first year will have two semester and at the end of each semester and examination once you clear it successfully you will achieve uh, 15 credits at the end of uh, semester 1 and semester 2 which means it is for the first year ba program okay for the second year ba uh, at the end of third semester and at the end of fourth semester you will achieve 22 credits each now the calculation of these credits and everything is based on the guidelines that we have so it is very important for you all to understand the importance of the uh, the papers that you are going to learn at first year bsc at a ba at second year ba and at third year ba so that eventually you will end up acquiring 120 credits 
after you pass your ty that is the final year examination of the ba program next please um these are the credits which uh, a student from ba in communication and media will achieve so the number of credits are different over here since the requirement of this program is different the type of um, papers or the type of courses that you are going to learn in this communication and media program are varying and this is a self financing course so the total number of credits that a student who is uh, pursuing his ba in communication and media will achieve 148 credits at the end of the third year which is semester 6 examination next please uh these are the credits for the bsc program so as you can see from here uh, at every year at the end of every semester the student who is pursuing bsc program will achieve 20 credits so you keep on accumulating these credits and the end of and at the end of the third year you will uh, be accumulating 120 credits for the bsc aided programs next please now this is a credit table for the five year integrated msc program exclusively in bioanalytical sciences as i had been saying the requirement and the courses that you are going to study in every program is different the number of credits allotted uh, at the end of each semester are different for the different programs so for this integrated uh, five year integrated msc program as you can see from here at the end of every semester a student would achieve 24 credits as a result accumulating 240 credits by the end of the 10th semester now because this is five year integrated program you can see five years out here and there are 10 semesters and at the end of 10th semester a student who will pass out with a, a, a msc program in bioanalytical sciences will acquire 240 credits next please now these are the credits for the bvo program uh, so this is uh, these programs are run under the ddu kaushal kendra as madam was mentioning and again because these are skill based courses you can see that there are different components at uh, every semester so the different credits are allotted based on the skill component and the general component as a result a student who is pursuing bvo program will end up accumulating 180 credits for the bvo program we have bvo program in uh, pharma analytical sciences and we have bvo in greenhouse management and also in travel and tourism management so all the students who have taken the admission for any of these bvo programs they will be achieving 180 credits at the end of the third year next please now you might be wondering if you have got only say 120 credits uh, at your uh, you know as an accumulated number of credits by the end of say ty bsc or ty ba and if you want to achieve additional credits which definitely is going to be a meaningful thing right so what we have done uh, at uya college is several departments have devised different certificate courses now the beauty of these certificate courses is they are interdisciplinary courses and they are absolutely available most of them are absolutely available to all the students be it the students on the science faculty or from the arts faculty now these are some of the features as the first feature talks about uh, there are more than 25 courses that are offered at ruya college uh, it's a blended mode of learning these days and that's the highlight of the certificate course uh, so some uh, some uh, certificate courses will require say the online uh, mode of learning and some of them may require the offline mode of learning we will definitely be able to figure out how this could be done in the given uh, current scenario each course comprises of three modules and the duration of 45 hours okay so uh, what is the advantage of taking up these certificate courses it enhances your skills and the creativity at the undergraduate level itself so it's always better to learn something which is apart from what your curricula is trying to teach you okay so you some some uh, you know science students may be interested in learning something from psychology and that may not be possible for them 
doing so in the current, uh, you know, in the given uh, curriculum. So what they could possibly do is try and choose a certificate course, which is offered by different departments and achieve those credits or based on their interest levels, try to learn something new. And of course, uh, while they do that, they are also acquiring three credits, additional credits, apart from their academic credits as a result of pursuing the additional certificate courses. Next, please. Here is the list of uh, certificate courses. As it is mentioned, the number of credits for each of the certificate course will be three, and the duration is of 45 hours. Aruya has a foreign language center, and they offer uh, you know, certificate courses in seven foreign languages or rather six foreign languages and also a certificate course in spoken and written English. So all those uh, students, they are interested in learning something new or a different language. If you want to enhance your linguistic skills, those people who want to kind of uh, polish their even uh, spoken English and written English skills, even they can opt for the very first course at, as it is listed uh, in this very slide. Next, please. Uh, apart from the Foreign Language Center, all the science and uh, arts department, more or less, have to offer or they have designed uh, a certificate course which is offered to the students. Certain certificate courses may be subject specific and hence not all of them will be uh, available for all the students, but of course most of them are definitely available to most of the students. Now, a detailed discussion on the certificate courses how you can enroll for these certificate courses, who is going to be the course coordinator, what is the syllabus or what are the contents of the certificate courses, all the details of this, along with their contact details, uh, the contact details of the course coordinators will be made available to you during the induction program. So as you can see on this slide, there are different certificate courses offered by botany department. Psychology has to offer several uh, certificate courses. Sanskrit department has to offer certain courses. So is political science, even the biochemistry department, philosophy department, the greenhouse management. So all these courses uh, in detail will be discussed during the induction program. Next, please. So this is uh, yet another list of, uh, uh, you know, the certificate courses. In fact, I would like to mention here that these were the recently launched certificate courses. So we launched these courses in the year 2021. And of course, we are going to continue offering these courses even to the existing students. So uh, again, as you can see from here, there are courses offered by Sanskrit department, psychology department, chemistry department. So some students may have a fear for, you know, mathematics and hence they would want to, you know, kind of polish their uh, skill sets in the basic mathematics or even advanced mathematics for which there are two certificate courses available, uh, which are made available by the chemistry department. Computer science is a very active department and even they offer uh, certificate courses in Android app development, as well as the course in Linux fundamentals. Uh, gene editing tools uh, in medicine and biotechnology, this certificate course is offered by the Department of Microbiology. Uh, and even this happens to be an extremely interesting course. One batch of this gene editing tools in medicine and biotechnology is already running, or they must have just finished with their certificate course. But obviously, this certificate course will be made available to the students um, for the biological sciences, even in the coming time. So uh, next, please. So with this, actually, I have come to the end of uh, the description of uh, the academic credits and the certificate courses. More information, obviously, regarding the certificate courses will be discussed during the induction program. And the notice regarding the induction program uh, will definitely be displayed very soon on our college website. So stay tuned. Thank you very much. I once again welcome you all to Ruya College. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for that beautiful description of the concept of academic credits, which is very new for the students who have enrolled in the undergraduate program, and also getting them acquainted with the variety of certificate courses that they may get an opportunity to pursue when they are at the college. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, next thing, we know that no academic program is complete without examination. So it is time for you to fasten your seatbelts, be very alert, and note down the examination rules and guidelines. 
For this, I would request our examination coordinator, Dr. Sunil Shankar Darbar, to address the gathering about the examination rules of Loya College. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Sachin. Thank you very much. So already, I think regarding autonomous, our principal ma'am, our dean, of this, already told you regarding all autonomous and everything. So <clears throat> I will be briefing you regarding our examination rule. So being an autonomous institute, the examination section of play a very important role in a branding the institute and smooth conducting of all examination activity. Maybe in other colleges means what at up to 12, but right now in autonomous institute, examination rule will be differ from the, even from the university. The examination cell has its own rule and regulation, which has been approved by our academic council from time to time, all the rules and regulations, even it's available to our college website. So please, all of you, Today itself, go and visit to our college official website. Check all the rule and regulation regarding all examination rules. Because later on, if you ask, so better just go through all the rules and regulation, all the notices. Already, Madam told you regarding visit to our college website. So you will see that in academics, you can see that examination, all rule and regulation. Because you should know aware about that, all the rules and regulation. Later, maybe you will face uh, some difficult things in uh, examination rules. So <clears throat> check college official website. Next slide, please. So there are two exams we are conducting from the examination section. So scheme of evaluation is total 100 marks. So two examination we are conducting, that is semester end examination, 60 marks, and then internal assessment, 40 marks. So under autonomy, we are following 60-40 pattern in all aided, unaided, all the courses. The scheme of, so here it is what 100 marks divided in two parts, 60 and 40. Both are compulsory. So semester end examination and internal. So examination section will conduct this two examination, internal as well as semester end examination. Next slide, please. So now see that modality of evaluation. So that 40 marks component, that is what the continuous internal assessment, even it is what CI. So this particular exam before your semester end examination, normally we conduct this before semester end examination means as per rule of university, that is 90 days, working days. So maybe in between 45 or 50 days, your internal examination will be normally we conduct. So two CI per semester and 20 marks each. So duration for this examination will be 30 minutes duration. That is for one that is CI. Next CI, I will tell you regarding that. The semester end examination, 60 marks. That will be a theory and written examination. Now during pandemic, this one semester end examination, 60 marks, you're not conducting theory. That is what MCQ. So even I will tell you about the semester later part. So duration for this, it will be a 60 marks examination, two hours duration. So both 40 marks and 60 marks. So one examination before six semester end, that is internal. So check that that is CI, that is will be a 20 marks and semester end, it is what the 60 marks. Next slide, please. So here, modality of assessment. So first of all, the 40 marks internal component, please note it down if it is possible. This is very important. Normally students are miss out this and they face afterward the problem regarding all that is class days, assignment and anything if they miss out. So first of all, this internal 40 marks, it is what the class days. So class days, internal class days include normally that is MCQ base. So during pandemic, even we are taking that is online platform with proctor base examination. So class days, 20 marks MCQ base. And then next component assignment. These are the assignments that depend on <clears throat> Uh, department to department, some departments will conduct projects, seminar, case studies, quizzes, viva, 
so 20 marks so total 40 marks but in this both the cases internal class test and the assignment compulsory to all if student appear only class test and no submission of assignment student will mark absent in both so don't consider that you will appear only class test otherwise you will submit only assignment both will be a compulsory class things so internal assessment it is 40 marks both 20 marks of class test and assignment 20 marks are compulsory and there will be no retest for both the components only in a few cases that is in a medical ground as such and even that with the permission of from the principal map otherwise there is no retest for both of them assignment as well as class test so again and again i am telling you whatever if it is a submission of assignment please check your maybe next uh, <clears throat> you will see that google classroom and other thing explain regarding that so time to time you have to submit the assignment there will be a deadline so don't miss out that deadline submit your assignment and even a class test please proper i told you earlier only that is regarding notice so all notices timetable everything will be available to the college official website so go through that and then attend this one next slide please now here that is what standard of pa passing so in both of that combined passes students shall obtain minimum 40 percent marks in each of the component so for 40 marks internal class test maximum 40 marks in internal class test in which qualifying marks will be 60 so this will be very important in out of 40 marks you have to call for qualification it is require a 16 so class test and the assignment both of that you have to take 16 marks and in semester and examination 60 marks in which you will qualify for that it is 24 marks is qualifying marks but both of them separately you have to pass if you are fail in a 16 marks qualifying you will be as it is it will be mark fail only so both that is it is important separately you have to pass for class test as well as semester end examination okay so next slide please <clears throat> so additional if that after the semester end examination and other thing so additional examination for semester end exam if the student it will uh, this particular exam additional examination semester it will be held for student who does not appear or remain absent in during that particular time period so only we are allowing on medical ground sports cultural activities nss ncc but sports even it's not for local it is university if you are representing from rio college for university that's it. no local sports we are allowing for this then cultural in same manner if you are representing from RIA for university, then it will be that NSS and NCC from our college, if it is the NSS and NCC, the program is there during that examination, then we can allow them for additional examination. But in all these circumstances, only principals, madams, permission required, else there will be no additional examination for other reasons, only this particular mentioned reason, even medical ground, you have to submit proper medical certificate for this. So all this thing, whatever things are there additional and this is mark regular exam only. It is not uh, ATKT or something. It is additional semester end examination. After your semester end examination, normally after 15 days, we conduct all this examination, but only on particular mentioned grounds. Okay. Next slide, please. Now, ATKT, this is what allowed to keep terms. So if student fails to qualify that, what I told you, 40% 40, 40 mark. So in maybe in an internal class test, either by semester in separately, if you are not qualified for 16 marks, either by 24 marks, so it will be mark fail. So student will have to appear for the ATKT examination. So ATKT examination, it will now conduct after four or five months later on your semester end examination, but it exams will conduct for 100 marks and three hours. So your 
internal marks will not carry forward you have to appear for 100 marks examination and 3 hours that's why i told you internal class assignment or there was test either was semester both are important so you can't miss out of this if you miss out either wise fail so you have to appear directly 100 marks means you have to score in that 40 marks no internal marks will carry forward in this case so etkt just see that when you semester end examination if you fail in internal as well as semester end then it will be a etkt examination after 4 to 5 months of semester end examination normally we conduct one or two etkt examination year only one etkt examination in year next slide please now after theory examination practical component for science by ground that is practical component for every course in science 50 marks and it will include two parts so here even 20 marks will be a internal assessment on regular basis so that 50 marks component here also it will divide in two parts 20 and 30 marks so before your external semester in examination or practical there will be a continuous evaluation regarding even a practical so even in this case if you miss out there will be no retest so you have to be even be regular regarding this 20 marks and 20 marks this is not they will announce that continuous internal assessment so regular basis they will follow up this so all the departments may be taking on regular basis of this practical and then later on semester end examination 30 marks so all this practical journals to be certified from the faculty in charges and then head of the department and here already madam told you regarding attendance so here which is 75 minimum attendance we expect 100% but 75 is minimum as per university rule below 75 will will not allow in any examination maybe even in a internal as well as even a semester so 75 is a minimum below that will not allow for any exams so be careful and that we require at least more than 80% 90% we hope 100% but 75 is a minimum below that there will be no examination and without the certified journal journals even we are not allowing any practical examination but in practical examination there will be no additional examination however it is in semester end examination there will be a additional examination but for practical component there will be no additional examination so whenever it will be a notice for practical time table so check always our college website for notice regarding all the time tables and notices regarding theory as well as practical examination <coughs> component next slide so here you are ten point grading system so it will be there even in mark sheet so see here you can go through this that is o grade 10 points a plus 9 so all this is what the grading already uh, sujata madam explained regarding all this thing so these are the credits and even extra credit madam told you but these are the credits regarding in your mark sheet all that is o a plus a b c d and that is what when it is mark lesser than 40% f will mark in your mark sheet so mark sheet uh, regarding that our college and university both uh, logo will be there so it is affiliated to member university so autonomous yes both the logo will be there our college as well as university so it is even the degree certificate will come from the university next slide thank you very much for attention thank you very much thank you sachin thank you very much thank you so much sir uh, for walking the stu students through the examination process and i'm sure that they have noted the points down and as sir mentioned that if you have missed out on something please do visit the college website where in the academic section you will find all the examination rules and regulations for for you to refer to also you can revisit the same youtube video if you have missed out on something now let us move ahead and try and understand yet another important aspect that is when are your academic sessions finally going to commence 
mantra. Can we go to the next slide? Next slide, please. So here are some of the instructions regarding your online classes and what are the platforms that we are going to make use of and some of the basic instructions that you have to know about when you are going to attend these virtual sessions. So let us begin with our discussion on the scene. Next slide, please. So as it is said, it's not just about ideas. It's about making ideas happen. And that's what we at Ruya strongly believe in. But even though it's a virtual platform, we have tried our level best in the last one and a half year to make this virtual ex experience also extremely enriching for our students out there so that the quality of the education is not compromised. Next slide. As per the government instructions regarding the COVID-19 pandemic, the initial sessions for all the courses are going to be virtual and they are going to be conducted purely online. Whenever we get regulations, revised regulations from the government and we are allowed to open up, we'll be more than happy to have you all on the campus resuming back your physical classes. But till then, the sessions are going to be online. Next slide. So first and foremost, where are you going to find your timetable? So please visit our college website, which is www.ruyacollege.edu. Please type this on Google, go to our official website, and there on the academics tab, when you click on academics tab, you will see a drop-down box, which is on the next slide. So as you see the drop-down box, you will see that there is something called a senior college timetable. And that is where your timetable is going to be. So when you click on this, you will see how it appears on the next slide. So here you can see that the timetables for the academic year of 2021-22 has been already uploaded, wherein for both science as well as arts stream, we have all the timetables for all three years which has been uploaded already. So if you are from science background, you're going to click on FIBSC. And if you are from arts background, then you're going to click on FIBA. As you click on these tabs, on the next slide, you will be able to see that the timetable is present there division-wise. So when you open, when you click on these tabs, you will be able to see your subject combinations. So whichever subject combination that you belong to, you are going to follow that timetable only specifically. So if you are a science student and you have a combination of chemistry, botany, and microbiology, whichever division has that particular combination, as you click on that, you will be able to see the timetable for that particular combination. Same thing goes for arts as well. So if you click on FIBA on the next slide, you will be able to see the timetable for all four divisions. And depending on the combination that you are from, you can follow the respective timetables. Now the question arises, this is about the timetable. We will understand that which lectures we, we have at what time, but where are we going to attend the lectures? Which platform are we going to make use of? And how do we receive the links for the same? So I'll be guiding you about that also. So on the next slide, we will see how we will be going about this process. So there are three things that we have to understand. First and foremost is a concept called as Google Groups. So when you filled your admission form, I'm sure that you gave in your email IDs. Using those email IDs, we will create Google Groups. Via these Google Groups, all emails from your respective departments will be sent out to you with the details regarding when the session is and at what time it is and which link you have to use to join those sessions. So all official information to you will be communicated via email using these Google Groups. Other than the Google Group, there will also be something called as Google Classroom, which will be created. I'm sure that most of you are also aware about Google Classroom because you all have been through the virtual education process last year, and you know what the Google Classroom basically is, wherein all communication regarding the academics can be done. And our lectures, the sessions, they will happen via Google Meet. For some of the subjects where the strength of the class is higher, we will be using Zoom platform for the same. But you need not worry about it because you will receive a link 
and you will have to click on that link and you will have to join the sessions. I will talk about each of these individually as we go ahead to the next slide. We will first begin with understanding what are Google Groups. So this is a close-knit group of your batchmates and teachers and Google Groups are created subject-wise. So for example, if you are a BA student and you have a combination of philosophy, psychology and political science, let me tell you that you will have a Google group for philosophy, a Google group for psychology, a Google group for political science. Same way, if you are a BSc student and your combination is chemistry, botany, microbiology, you will have a Google group for each of these subjects. Wherein those respective departments will send you emails about the sessions with the details of the sessions. Now, please understand, you will have to keep a constant check on your email ID so that you're not missing out on any emails. Also see to it that you're checking your spam folders in the uh, email ID, so that if your emails are delivered to the spam, you're not missing them out. So keep a constant check on both your inbox as well as your spam folders. Let us go to the next slide. So you all are aware about Google Classroom. Let me tell you that when your departments will send you an email, in the email, they will either send you a Google Classroom code or a Google Classroom link. Using that code or link, you can join the respective department's classrooms. There, all the study materials, presentations, all other details regarding that subject will be shared with you guys. So when you type Google Classroom in your Google search box, this is the first hit that you will see. And you can click on Google Classroom and you will go to a page which looks like this on the next slide. So this is how the page will look like. And on the extreme right hand side, you have a plus sign. You're going to click on that plus sign. So when you click on the plus sign, on the next slide, you will be able to see there is a drop down box which says join class. Please click on join class. And as you click on join class, it will ask you to enter the class code, which was emailed to you by the department. So please enter the class code and you will be able to join the classroom. If the department has directly provided you a link of the classroom, just clicking on that link will take you to the Google Classroom. When you join the classroom, this is how it's going to look like. Can we go to the next slide? So yes, the, yes. So this is how the classroom will look like. There are four tabs there. There is stream, classwork, people, and marks. So people obviously tells you who all are part of that classroom, which will include your teachers and your batchmates. Then there is stream where all notifications will come up. So whatever is being posted by your teachers, you will be able to see it as a notification on the stream. And as we go to the next slide, you will see how the classwork would look like. So on the next slide, you can see that the classwork is wherein everything is organized. All study materials will be put up paper-wise there for you to refer to. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. So you will have Google Classrooms equivalent to the number of subjects that you have. So if your combination is chemistry, botany, zoology, you will have three Google Classrooms. One for chemistry, one for botany, one for zoology. Then those subject related informations will be provided to you by your respective teachers. Can we go to the next slide? Now, as I said that for conducting the sessions, either the lectures or practicals in case of science students, the platform that we will be using is Google Meet. In some cases, we may also utilize Zoom that will be informed to you by the respective department. And there will also be departmental orientation sessions where the departmental faculty members will guide you about which platform they are going to make use of and how to access it. So need not worry about that. But let me give you some general instructions about Google Meet. So let's go to the next slide. So first and foremost, you will get a calendar invite on your email ID. This calendar invite will help you locate the link always because it gets added to your Google Calendar. So you don't have to search for the link every time. And it becomes easy for you to just click once and get into your classroom. 
So you can see that there is a link below meet.google.com slash DFP. So that's your link. So you're going to click on that link, join your sessions. As you click on it, let us see what happens. So on the next slide, you will see that as you click on that link on a computer or a laptop, it's going to take you to a new tab and it is going to show you the audio option, the video option, and also ask to join. So please note that first and foremost, mute yourself, keep your videos switched off. So you are going to see to it that you're muting yourself, you're switching your video off before you join the session. Because this will reduce any kind of disturbance that may happen in the session. And secondly, it also gives you a better bandwidth and internet connectivity for you to attend these sessions. Now, if you are on a desktop or a laptop, you have to just click on the link and you will be inside the session. But if you are on a mobile phone or on any Android device, like, uh, you know, having tablets, then in those circumstances, you will have to download an app. That app is Google Meet app, which you will get on your Play Store. For computers and laptops, you don't have to download anything. But for Android devices, like mobile phones, tablets, you will surely have to download an application called as Google Meet, which is available on the Play Store. So let us see on the next slide how it looks for mobile phone, iPad, or tablet devices. So it's going to be very similar, just the orientation of the screen will change a little. Again, you're going to mute yourself, switch your video off before you actually ask to join and get into the session. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So once you join the session, this is how it is going to look like. Okay, wherein you can see that the audio and video is turned off. At the top, right hand side, you can see that there is a chat box. So the chat box can be used for active communication and interaction during the session. So in the next slide, you will be able to see that you can type in your questions in the chat box and ask your questions to the uh, teacher who is teaching you during that particular session. Also, you can unmute yourself and speak. We really appreciate our students being interactive so that the sessions are going to become more lively and effective. So please feel free to unmute and speak out your opinions, your queries, your uh, inquisity is something that Ria is always happy to see. Let's go to the next slide. So what are the prerequisites to attend the session? First and foremost, you need to have a device, either it could be a desktop, a laptop, a mobile phone or an iPad or a tablet, any of these. You need to have a stable internet connectivity. We do understand that there could be genuine connectivity issues at times. But see to it that you are informing your faculty members about it so that they know why you are not in the class. Also see to it that you're keeping a book and pen with you. It doesn't mean that if the teacher is not in front of you, you can keep the session on and you can just go about doing things. No, please see to it that you're taking these sessions very seriously. A lot of efforts are being taken by the faculty members so that you can adapt yourself to these virtual platforms effectively. So some effort, some initiative from your end would be greatly appreciated. Please keep a book and pen always with you during the sessions to note down some important points, which will help you during your preparation for examination. Next slide. Please test your technology beforehand itself to avoid any kind of technical glitches, because if there are glitches, then you could miss some of the important part of the lectures. Please make sure that your microphone works so that in case you are asked any questions or you want to ask any questions to the professor, your microphone has to be active. Also see to it that you are charging in your devices well in advance, especially if you are on Android devices, so that you don't run out of battery and you miss out on your sessions. So see to it that you are, you are plugging in your devices in advance and keeping it fully charged ahead of time. Also see to it that you're setting up your space an uninterrupted space so that you are not getting disturbed during the sessions. Make sure that it's a quiet zone where you, wherein you can focus and concentrate on the sessions that are being conducted for you. Please see to it that you are keeping as many less distractions as possible 
so that you are able to give your complete 100% during the duration of your class. Also, see to it that if your professor is asking you to switch on your camera and speak something, you should be ready for the same. So please be prepared. You may be asked to switch on the camera and speak out at any point of time during the sessions. Next slide. What are some of the do's and don'ts while attending the online classes? I'm sure that you all being good learners, you already know about some of the guidelines and rules that you have to keep in mind when you're attending the virtual session. First and foremost, value time. Please be punctual, log in on time so that you're not missing out on anything that is being discussed during the session. Follow your timetable, attend the lectures regularly as already uh, it has been reiterated time and again that we expect we are students to have 100% attendance. 75% though is mandatory, but we are expecting our students to be with us throughout in all our sessions. And we would love to have a very constructive dis discussions and interactions during these sessions. Please understand that even though you are in a virtual platform, that doesn't mean that you're just logging in and moving around. Your yeah, attendance, both physical and mental attendance is very, very crucial. So please be attentive during all the sessions. Next slide. So your attendance is regularly recorded. We have softwares for that using which we record all your attendance electronically. Okay, and it is monitored by the respective teacher in charges and the attendance committee also puts up default a list. So please take this very, very seriously. As said, keep your audio muted and video switched off. You can also make use of headphones or cords so that you, you ensure that you're hearing out uh, discussions very effectively during the session. Take down some of the key pointers, actively participate in the session. And in case you need to communicate to the faculty member about any questions, type it out in the chat box. You can also unmute and ask your questions and regularly revise the concepts. Also, it's very important to understand the significance of peer learning. Do connect with your classmates for discussions. We do have a lot of group discussions that we organize during the sessions to make the sessions very interactive and not very monotonous because online learning could you know, be a little boring if you do not do these kind of activities during the sessions. So we see to it that we are constantly engaging our students in the virtual classes. So see to it that you are actively connecting with your classmates and having some constructive discussions about the subject, right? Also see to it that you're being self-disciplined and you're being honest. We will we condemn completely any kind of notorious activities during the virtual uh, sessions. Strict disciplinary actions will be taken against the students who are trying to disturb the sanctity of the classroom. Next slide. So please do not misuse the chat box. All student activities are being strictly monitored. Whatever you type in the chat box is also getting recorded. Please understand that we have softwares for the same. See to it that you're not indulging in any kind of mischievous behaviors during the sessions. And that could disrupt uh, you know, the ongoing class, because if that happens, then strict disciplinary action would be taken. Be an active learner. We would, as I said earlier, that we would be happy to hear you out. So commit yourself and participate in all the virtual sessions, sessions that are conducted for you. Glitches do happen. As said earlier, we understand that there are technical difficulties that may crop up, but don't make it a reason always because teachers will expect you to have a check on your technology. And if there is a genuine issue, keep your faculty members informed and they would be more than happy to help you with whatever you missed out in the session. You can go back, read about it and come, come up with your questions. All teachers will be happy to address to your queries. See to it that you're not making a regular reason to miss out on classes that will not be entertained. See to it that you're not presenting your screen without faculty permission or until and unless you're instructed to do so. Please do not present your screen during the virtual sessions. So I would request all of you to take a screenshot of this. So Google Groups will be formed using the email IDs that you have given us during the form filling process. 
Department wise orientation is going to begin from day after tomorrow, which is 3rd September 2021. Okay, so please see to it that you are keeping a check on your uh, email. Other than that, regular lectures are also going to begin from Friday, 3rd September. So during your lecture schedule, uh, you will have to join the respective links which are being sent to you by your respective departments. Please see to it that you're attending all the sessions from 3rd September without fail so that you don't miss out on the important information and topics that are being taught. Also, the lecture links, the Google Classroom code, all details will be mailed to you by tomorrow, which is 2nd September, by 9 p.m. in the night. Only if you have not received the details, even after 9 p.m. tomorrow, you can visit our website where the list of all HODs, heads of the departments, has been given. And you can write to the respective department's head that you have not received the details yet. Please note that you are not going to write to any heads of the department before 9 p.m. tomorrow. Okay? Only if after 9 p.m. you have not received emails, you will write an email to the heads of the departments that you are going to be engaged in during your undergraduate program. Finally, if you are not willing to learn, no one can help you. But if you're determined to learn, no one can stop you. And this is very, very important to keep in mind. And once again, I welcome you on behalf of the entire Ruya team to the undergraduate program and to this huge Ruya family where you are going to spend your next three years and maybe if uh, you're going to take up your postgraduate and PhD studies with us, maybe uh, for some more years ahead. So uh, wishing you all a very, very happy learning process with Ruya College. Also, I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Dr. Anushri Lokur, our in-charge principal, our vice principals, Dr. Varsha Shukla and Dr. Manish Hate, our dean academics, Dr. Sujata Suvarnapatki, the entire technical team, the website and social media team, also Ms. Antara Vaidyanathan, who is here with us, helping us out with the technicalities of today's program. And obviously, all the faculty members who have extended their uh, cooperation to us for conducting this particular session, and all wonderful students and parents out there for taking out time and attending these orientation sessions. So, uh, as I said, please keep a check on your email IDs. You will get all the details by tomorrow on your email IDs. And we are very excited to have you all at Ruya College. Thank you so much and have a great day. Thank you.